Do you dream of coloring realistic flowers with Copic markers, colored pencils, or even watercolor? Do you keep practicing, coloring tons of florals, finding new tutorials, but yet you never seem to get the look of a real flower? Today, let's look at my top tip for coloring flowers and botanicals with more life and greater realism. Hi, my name is Amy Schulke and I'm the artist and illustrator here at Vanilla Arts Company. I specialize in helping colorers take their projects to the next level using fine art techniques. In this video, I'll show you how one simple change to your coloring process will help you improve the look and artistry of your botanical stamps and coloring book images, making them more lifelike, more dimensional, more realistic flowers. But first, I'd like to ask you a question. What is your greatest coloring challenge? Is it color selection? Is it blending? Is it finding the right stamp image? Tell me about it in the comment section below. It doesn't have to be a long comment, even a few words will do. Tell me where you struggle so that I can make future videos or maybe even courses to help you out. And hey, while you're there, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button so you don't miss the next video. The coloring image that you see here is one of my marker painting workshops. It's called Calendula, and it's an intermediate level online class. The full project took me about 90 minutes to color. Today, we're focusing on just the petal portions because that's the part of floral coloring that causes beginners so many headaches. Most Copic marker tutorials for flowers follow a very standardized pattern. For every petal, you follow the same method. You have a pretty blending combination of at least three markers. You coat the entire petal with the lightest color. Then you add a middle color and a darker color. And slowly you work your way lighter again, blending as you go. That's basically the whole tutorial. You're supposed to repeat this same method over and over and over again until you've filled in all the petals. Same, 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 all the way around the clock. One of the reasons why this style of floral technique is popular is because it's so easy to learn. Once you figure out how to do one petal, all you have to do is repeat it 10 or 20 times. Same, same, same. You can keep going like this for the rest of your life, right? there's an oddly satisfying quality to this kind of coloring. It's a little like knitting in that it's addicting to anyone who loves repetition. But it doesn't look very real, does it? Here's the problem with the same, same, same technique. It looks pretty cool on a simple flower, but what happens when the flower is complex? This method looks less and less real as you begin choosing more realistically drawn stamps. The better the line drawing, the more realistic that digital stamp looks, the worse the same, same, same method looks. What's happening here? Standard flower petal technique, the same, same, same stuff. It looks fake because it's an artificial pattern. It always goes light, medium, and dark, no matter what the shape of the petal or how that petal is positioned. Same, same, same. It's a pattern, a repeating pattern. Meanwhile, nature never sings the same song twice. Same, same, same technique doesn't look real because you're not coloring anything real. Real petals are all slightly different shapes. They're pointed in different directions. They rise and they fall differently. They catch the light at different angles. In the real world, every petal is different, different, different. Two petals sitting side by side can carry completely different light and shade. If you're not coloring them different, you're not coloring them real. The irony is that a lot of colors use this method because they're looking for greater depth and dimension. And this same, same, same method promises you depth, but it doesn't deliver. It can't deliver because it's a pattern. Same, same, same. 
When you color a petal light, medium, and dark, you're not coloring with depth. You're relying on the stamp artist to save your butt. To the viewer, your coloring does not look dimensional. It's the stamp lines that make it look dimensional. Sure, we see your color and we see your pretty blends, but we have to read the black outlines to decide what the flower actually looks like. This method does not work without the stamp lines. See? Without those big black outlines, we don't know what the heck you've colored. The cookie cutter method gives you a nice blend, but that's not depth, that's not dimension, and it's certainly not realism. In my coloring classes, I don't teach light, medium, and dark. Instead, we use a concept that I call push and pull. We use darker color to make objects look farther away. We push them deep with darkness. We use a lighter color to make objects look closer, so we pull them close with lightness. Even without blending, look at how the push and pull method clarifies and sorts out the complex layers of this calendula flower. Using an optical illusion, using that illusion of push and pull, we can create depth without a single color blend. And then once you add the blends back in, you get something that looks amazing. Here's part of the calendula online class and I'm using three yellow markers here, not as a blending combination of light, medium, and dark, but instead I'm using three yellows as a way to indicate which petals are sitting high on the flower and which ones are positioned down below. So for the two petals that are sitting farther away from us, you'll see that I used more of the two darkest yellow markers. I'm pushing those petals visually farther away from you, the viewer. Now I've got two petals that are sitting up on top of the darker ones. The top petals are going to have more of the medium and the light marker on them, and that pulls the petals visually forward. See how this push and pull is starting to work? No two petals on the flower are going to have the same combination of marker on them because no two petals on the blossom are shaped the same way or positioned the same way. I color them one petal at a time and I'm always thinking about where that petal sits. Is it being covered over by a neighbor or does it sit up on top of the layers? Every petal is unique and I change the proportions of light, medium, and dark to reflect that petal's unique position. This is a step beyond that same, same, same technique. This is push and pull, and it's much closer to what fine artists do. This is not a coloring technique, it's an actual painting method. But it works with markers, and it works with colored pencils, and you can learn to do it. I have students pushing and pulling in all of my classes all the time. They learn it in the class, but then they start applying it to all of their other coloring projects. Now here's the catch. In order to use the push and pull method, you can't fall back into your same, same, same coloring habits. Push and pull requires that you think it requires that you concentrate. This isn't pattern coloring where you repeat the same, same, same. Every petal has to be an independent object. You have to color every petal as if it's the only petal you've ever colored. Every petal is its own shape. Some have folds, some can twist or bend, and all of that needs to be considered as you push and pull. And that's one reason why I teach with photo references. I want you to see what the pedal is doing in real life so that you can take that real push or pull and use it now, but then also apply that same concept to future stamps and future projects. In order to color with depth, dimension, and realism, you can't just set up a pattern and then mindlessly repeat it over and over again. Accurate depth and realistic dimension requires active coloring where you observe and think your way through the image. Depth and dimension. Depth and dimension. Every color wants more depth and more dimension in their coloring. So you search for better marker recipes 
better color blends, and you're constantly hunting for new floral techniques and better flower tutorials. But it's really just a quest for the perfect pattern that's finally going to make your coloring look realistic and yet quick and easy. But coloring realistic florals shouldn't be quick and easy. The key to realistic botanicals is thinking. Treating each petal as if it's something new and wonderful and something that's never been seen before. Because every petal is new and wonderful and never been seen before. Botanicals are a style of art that has been around for centuries, and it's going to be here longer after you and I have bit the dust. Realistic florals, they're like the ultimate artist puzzle. Each petal is a mental exercise, which frankly is far more addictive than the same, same, same technique that you're used to. When you stop coloring a repetitive pattern and you start coloring the real light and the real shadow of real flowers, you enhance your artistry, but you also enhance your humanity. When I die, I don't want to leave behind a bunch of coloring projects. A book full of same, same, same coloring isn't how I want to sum up my life. But a book full of marker paintings that show my daughter how I see the world, that's a piece of her mother. That's something she can treasure because it's not someone else's tutorial. It's a piece of me. You can color same, same, same. Or you can share with the world how you see a flower. What do you want? as your legacy.